This video was sponsored by Enhance, Elbilmec, a bit of planner, Camp Power, and Bill Componente. Yo, what's up? Today we're going to do a range test of BYD Sea Lion 7. We are in Thailand right now. It's where we're in Chiang Mai. So it's roughly 20 degrees Celsius, which is typical summer day in Norway, right? So the Sea Lion 7 will arrive in Norway and Europe soon. But this is a slightly different version than maybe many of the Norwegians would go for because uh, the, the one we have here is the 82.5 kilowatt hour and it's a performance all-wheel drive. And then in Norway, they will probably get the 91.3 kilowatt hour. But still, it should have the same efficiency I mean, or the same consumption, right? Whatever you measure here. So, yeah. Um, what should I say? It's a, it's a fairly spacious car, but it's not that big. You know, it's roughly 4.8 meters long. So at least I measure that it could seem like it's a bit thirsty when I hammer it, but uh, maybe there were other conditions like uh, headwind and uphill and some, some stuff like that. So yeah, so um, I have to show you that we have... Isabel, yo Isabel, baby! Yo Isabel, wait, okay, Isabel, you have, to, you have to sit properly, okay, once we start driving. Daddy, I Okay, okay. Isabel, unfortunately, she's freaking loud shit every time. BYD, stop that annoying, you know, because the key fob, the car is on and the key fob is not there. So it's like, please check if the key inside the car is really loud in there. You can wake up the kids, you know. Let us be able to turn off that annoying notification. But um, yeah, so uh, long story short, um, <coughs> it's two at night now. Isabel is uh, a bit sick. She vomited earlier today and she just didn't want to go back to sleep and she wanted to come with me. She wanted to be in the Cybex. So yeah, so hopefully she will go uh, fall to sleep soon, but uh, I have to proceed with the test. So yeah. The steering wheel is on the right side, which is the wrong side, should have been left side, with the right side. Isabel, okay, what is it, baby? Okay, baby, Isabel, that is gonna shoot a video, okay, and then we deal with that, all right? No, okay, okay. So, yeah, so um, we will measure the consumption, but this is a freaking Chinese car. It doesn't have a proper trip meter like you know it. It has the rolling average stuff. Oh, Isabel, okay, Isabel, we're gonna finish it. Huh? Daddy needs to do a quick one, okay? It shows this uh, rolling average shit here, like most Chinese cars. But when you power off the car, it will show you the last trip and kilowatt hour here briefly. So that's what we're going to do. That's, what the, that's how we did it with other BYDs also. So yeah, now I have to uh, get ready and then check out on Isabel. All right, we're on the move. So uh, the reason why I do this at night is because there's no traffic. Even in the evening, like 10 in the evening, there's simply way too much traffic that we cannot maintain 120 kilometers per hour in the fast lane. But at night now, we can do that. So yeah, now we're doing the 90 test first. <clears throat> yeah, I noticed that the, you know, the screen is at the lowest intensity, but it's still too bright. This is a typical Chinese car. <clears throat> so we cruise on 93. And you can see that uh, it's, uh, wait, where's the temperature? There, there, 20 degrees Celsius outside. Okay, so it's nice and warm. So we just drive this loop on the motorway, a little bit back and forth and measure the consumption. And then I will eventually measure the net capacity later and figure out how it is and put it in the table. So um, yeah, uh, this is a concrete surface and it seems like it's been made by human slaves. Okay, but it's not that smooth unlike uh, other places like uh, Falkenberg in Sweden. So maybe that roughness uh, creates more friction, I don't know, but uh, we'll see. But I had indication that this car is thirsty, so I will see how it is. Uh, if we also get this thirstiness now or what. So um, I noticed that this is a quiet car. We have double glazed window here in the front of this, not in the back. But the, the, the car feels well insulated and also nice ride. Yeah, it, it's not as harsh as a Model Y, for example. And it's also not as bouncy as that other car, the D-Pilot ride, you know? So it seems to be 
actually very very balanced this is uh, based on the they call it the, the 3.0 platform so it seems like uh, byd they have done lots of improvement uh, i'm actually quite impressed of how this car rides yeah okay maybe slightly i mean it's like the, it has that um, suv ride but it's not both total both it's some both of course so and then the uh, auto stair at least over here is doing a pretty good job i did drive from bangkok all the way here so it's actually the best auto steer and adaptive cruise control i have experienced in byd and actually surpasses many chinese cars so let me explain many byds they will do that accelerate decelerate accelerate decelerate this car the sea lion doesn't do it and many chinese cars also byd when you go in curves and use adaptive cruise control it will slow down in the curve this car will almost not slow down in curve. there's some sharper curves when it will do it so it seems like they have done lots of improvement there so two thumbs up now we just have to measure the consumption right <laughs> all right round one 6.2 kilowatt hour okay now we do the 120 test and uh, well strange thing is that it's three at night and they are freaking right lane huggers so i have to hug the middle lane and just undertake them but thai people they are actually so used to undertaking that the right lane huggers might actually slow down for you so you can get in front of them or something like that <laughs> welcome to thailand yeah but it is a bit bumpy you can see it man <laughs> yeah so okay let's hammer it and uh on the previous test i measured that we had whopping 186 watt hour per kilometer i mean it's still well, 20 degrees outside so uh, the ac doesn't have to work hard at all but it's just the car is just thirsty <clears throat> but yeah i'm running a normal mode not any, any eco mode it shouldn't matter right if it's a well designed car so i'm not gonna bother even trying eco mode because no most times i will i want to use normal mode not eco mode so you can say maybe ECMO will disengage one motor and something like that. Um, okay, we'll see. Maybe I'll test that afterwards. Okay, round two. 8.7 kilowatt hour. Holy macaroni, that was 257 watt hour per kilometer in the 120 test. I just calculated now. When it's 20 degrees outside, this thing is a thirsty beast. <laughs> But uh, okay, so um, I will try now eco mode. And the indication you have that this eco mode is this leaf here. So we do try now 90 test and see if we get the better result than the previous 90 test. Then, yeah, so um, I don't know. We just try to find out how we can make this car less uh, thirsty or more efficient, right? Oh, I'm doing 90 kilometers per hour on the GPS, and a mother trucker just overtook me. I guess over here they don't have speed limiters yeah so uh, I mean officially they can go at uh, 80 kilometers per hour max but uh, at night uh, when the police is not around they don't care <laughs> and I think they don't also don't have those uh, uh, those uh, trip recorders whatever right so uh, no evidence how fast they were going in case they would be checked afterwards actually I'm not sure maybe you need to correct me about this all right, eco run. Distance is the same, 33.6 kil uh, kilometer. 6.1 kilowatt hour. All right, we are now charging at the 120 kilowatt charger. I'll be getting 114. Close enough. I think this is okay speed. Uh, I've seen that they can maintain 150 kilowatt, actually 152 kilowatt until 52%, and then it's uh, throttles a bit. But uh, also, <laughs> we haven't preheated anything. You know, this is Thailand. So, uh, based on ambient temperature, 20 degrees Celsius, I bet the battery temperature might be at least 25, maybe close to 30 degrees Celsius. Yeah, all good. Wait a minute. When I drove from Bangkok, where it was 32 degrees Celsius, and I kind of hammered it, right? Uh, by the time I reached 52%, it would throttle to 102 kilowatt. But this time, we get faster speed. I suspect that it was actually rapid gating on that trip from Bangkok to Changdao trip. But this time we don't rapid gate. 
and it means that this 3.0 platform whatever it's called still rapid gates and still doesn't have strong enough cooling unlike tesla or the german cars or the mab cars for example hmm. well 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 unfortunately i could not get the obd to work you know, or car scanner to work it didn't show me any data well anyway based on ev database uh, it's claimed that we have 82.5 kilowatt hour net capacity and that the uh, gross capacity is 84 kilowatt hour. So I'll find out more about that later. But uh, based on that, and also based on the best result on the 90 test, we can actually go 458 kilometers. Wow. But uh, And in the, in the high speed test, only 321. Uh, but it, the car is a bit thirsty. Yeah. A uh, more efficient car would be maybe around 20 watt hour per kilometer lower end, but especially in the high speed test, it just appears to be quite thirsty. So, but this is also what I experienced when I drove from Bangkok to Chiang Mai and so on, is that it's uh, not as efficient as some of the other car. And it could be because of the performance drivetrain, the dual motor, and that it might run on always uh, dual motor or something you know it doesn't disengage one motor that could be it uh, the reason why so maybe if we try the rear wheel drive eventually we will get more uh, like more efficient results yeah but overall though the car is pretty good it's quiet comfortable uh, and also good ride and so on so it seems like BYD did it they copied fat e-tron <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I think that's gonna be it for now. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, thank you for watching and talk to you later. And Isabel fell asleep many hours ago and she's been sleeping now. So it seems like this sleeping position, this more upright position is better because she has some, uh, some mucus and she doesn't get that uh, in her whatever, uh, uh, in the wrong place when she's laying down where she's sleeping more upright. But I'm gonna get her in bed soon, so yeah. Anyway, bye-bye.